Hello everyone, it's Giga Beef here, and today we're going to be looking at recoil reducing ammo again. If any of you are having deja vu right now, that's no surprise. I recently made a video on ammo that reduces the recoil of your weapon and came to the conclusion that this is a flat amount that applies to your gun when you fire. That video seemed to answer the age old question of how the recoil reduction actually works, but I had a few comments and I've seen a few things since that gave me pause for thought, and it looks like maybe I was wrong? At least in part anyway, and maybe only technically, but I'll explain why shortly. However, the whole picture is seemingly more complicated than we had first thought with the introduction of 1212. What we proved in that previous video was that ammo doesn't work like attachments on a gun, which use the base recoil to make the adjustments to the weapon's handling. This is still true, in that original test I outlined three potential methods that could be used to calculate the final recoil when loading recoil reducing rounds into your weapon, which were firstly as a flat number, like it states in game if you look at the ammo, secondly the same method as attachments, i.e. additively applying this to the weapon's base recoil, or finally that it's still a percentage but it works differently to everything else in the game and applies after all other buffs from mods. Now I had already mentally thrown out the last option in a glaring lapse of scientific rigour and I didn't try to differentiate between scenarios B and C. This was a mistake but the reason why it wasn't obvious is primarily because, well the differences just aren't that big most of the time. Between a flat recoil reduction and a percentage reduction applied after mods, the change in performance is usually small, and it's only when you use extreme examples with very high percentage recoil modifiers that it's even testable. In the original experiment I was using an AK-105 with 108 recoil, a variant with 89 recoil, and another one with 77 recoil. In this previous video the point still stands and is true in essence, the 20% recoil reduction from 7 and 40 rounds in the 545 caliber should be obvious as to whether it's using the base recoil of 160 of an AK-105 because this equates to 32 recoil points or if it just removes 20 points from the modded version with 108 recoil. The 12 recoil difference in these methods is why I use weapons with 89 and 77 recoil in the first place to check it against the 108 version and prove that it's not using the 160 recoil of the base weapon. The problem here is that 20 points being removed from a 108 recoil AK is nearly identical to a 20% reduction of the modded recoil which I didn't test for. Removing 20 points gets you to 88 vertical, obviously, whereas removing 20% gets you to, yeah, 86.4. With the recoil patterns how they are, and given that I have no access to totally recoil free testing areas or anything like that, these two recoils look practically identical when trying to do the experiment. As you might imagine, at 100 recoil specifically, both methods are completely the same. A flat amount of 20, or a percentage of 20%, gives 20 flat points of recoil reduction in both scenarios. The differences between these two methods increases as you move away from 100 recoil. If it was a percentage, the recoil reduction would be better than you expect a recoils higher than 100, and worse than you would expect a recoils lower than 100. What really got me thinking about this was musing about the zero recoil ADAR. This occurred because a bug was introduced in one of the patches where you could apply two stocks to the ADAR buffer tube, both the standard one and another one over the top. In the video, the recoil is actually very slightly negative on the weapon. The footage from this very short lived bug shows that the ADAR has no recoil at all, like literally zero. The gun doesn't move at all when fired. But this didn't tally with my experience of using heavily modded builds like the Meta AKM with 44 recoil, and there's even a stupid version of the AKMN with 37. The problem with this is that using US ammo should get you to a recoil of 7, but this certainly doesn't feel like the case if the floor is actually zero. This time, in order to get a good handle on what's going on, let's jump into the tests, starting with the low end of the recoil and the AKMN. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to test three different guns. We have a stupid AKMN build, which gets to 37 recoil. And this one we're going to have PS rounds in, because that's going to have zero reduction in recoil at all. And so that gives us a flat 37, which is great. Then we have an AKM, which is at 53 recoil. Now this is interesting because if you took 53 recoil and you added US rounds in, then that should take you down to exactly the same recoil as we have on this weapon, as to the 37. Then the final weapon that we're going to use is basically from 37 if we added 30 to this to get to 67. I can't quite make it 67 because of the way that the AKM recoil works. You can either get 66 or 68, but that should be close enough for our test. So we're going to go with 66. If this was a flat amount, 66 minus 30 would be 36. So it should be the same as the AKMN with 37 recoil on it pretty much. So the, the point of this test is we're going to use the AKMN first, we're going to see then which of these two recoil patterns matches, and we're going to see which method is correct, because this one has got US rounds in it, this one has also got US rounds in it, so these are both benefiting from the minus 30% or the minus 30 flat recoil, 
and this one has got PS rounds in it so it's unaffected. So let's get the test underway and let's see what happens. I'm going to stand back as far as I can because the effect is quite small because the recoils on all of these guns is very low. Okay, so that last one that we just used, this was the 66. So this should be the same as the AKMN if it is minus 30. And the other one, if this is 53 and it reduces this by 30%, then this should be the same as the AKMN. So let's go and have a look. Well, interestingly, as far as I can tell, basically the central one, which was this gun that we used, the AKM here with 53, it looks like this one is actually better than, than this weapon. And that's kind of what we would expect. So on the low recoil end, it appears that versus a benchmark of 37 recoil with no buff on the round used, i.e. PS, that 53 recoil with US rounds with the 30 reduction is in fact better, and 67 recoil with US is pretty much the same. Or is it maybe very slightly worse if we look really, really closely? I noticed that I had completed this test with two AKMs rather than the original, which was an AKM-N, and despite being pretty sure that this makes no difference, I did it again just to make sure with the same result. This looks like the flat recall method is broadly correct, but let's do the testing with the really high recall first before trying to draw any final conclusions. Okay, so this time we have the wild AKs at the other end of the spectrum. We start with the highest recoil AKM that you can get that's still functional, which is 189 vertical recoil. We then have an AKM with 159 vertical recoil, which would be exactly 30 less than 189, which should in theory be the same if it's a flat amount. And then we have an AKM with 132 recoil, which would be if it's a percentage on the original. Because what we've got here is we've got an AKM with 189, if you apply 30% to this, because we've got US loaded into this boy, as you can see here, then that would end up being 132 which is going to be equivalent to the 132 recoil AKM with PS rounds, or it's going to be equivalent to the 159 vertical recoil AKM with PS rounds. So let's get this test on the road and let's see, we could be much closer this time because the gun jumps so much, it's much easier to see. So it does appear if this gun, the 132 gun is the same as the original AK, whereas the other one is slightly higher, which implies that the 30 isn't working in this particular case. So this test is telling us that it's more like a percentage of the final weapon recoil. This now leaves us in a bit of an awkward situation. At low recoil levels, it seems like the flat method is correct, and at high levels, the percent method appears to be correct. The only thing that I can say about it practically is that firstly, you can see from the tests that the differences are just not that huge, but also that at low recoil levels, the flat method is pretty much spot on, and it's in these cases that we care more about the recoil reduction overall, because, after all, we're trying normally to make weapons with low recoil. Nevertheless, the high recoil case is interesting, but it doesn't really matter for actual gameplay 99% of the time. Where does this leave us overall though? The honest truth is that I'm not 100% certain, but I do have a theory. With the introduction of 12.12, we know that recoil has been added to all the weapons across the board, but without changing any of the stats in game. Now, there are some sources around the internet that imply that this increase in recoil is about 20 points on every weapon. There is no way for me to independently verify this, but it feels about right, so let's just run with it for the time being. If this is the case, and if the stats in the background change in a way that affects the overall recoil, and if that change then interacts with the round buff in a linear way, we can translate the low recoil test as follows. 37 recoil would become 57, 67 recoil would become 87, and 53 recoil would become 73 recoil. Now, if we apply US ammo to the 87 and 73 recoil, we end up with 61 and 51 recoil instead. Compared to our base test, which was 37 in-game but is now 57 in our new model, this would mean that one of the guns would be a tiny bit worse by 4 recoil, and one of them would be a little bit better by 6. Is that what we saw in our test before? I'll let you be the judge of that and let me know what you think down in the comments. Working backwards, the way to replicate this would be to use a weapon with 61 recoil in game as 61 plus the hidden 20 would be 81, with US ammo that would become 57 and removing the hidden 20 again gets us back to 37 of the original test weapon using PS rounds. Giving this a try, it doesn't look like too terrible of a theory. It's definitely plausible at least, but ultimately at this stage there are too many unknown variables about potential fixed amounts hidden in the background and how that interacts specifically with ammo recoil bonuses to go any further down this rabbit hole. 
The difference between these two methods on a 50 recoil AKM loaded with US rounds that have a minus 30 recoil bonus is 20 overall recoil for a flat bonus versus 29 when applying the theory that we discussed, and only in the extreme case of 37 recoil build with US would the difference be quite noticeable from 7 overall recoil if flat versus 20 when using the modified percentage. So to summarise, for all intents and purposes, it does appear as if the fixed amount method is good enough practically for estimating the benefits of recoil that we will get from using specific rounds with negative recoil bonuses when creating low recoil weapons, even if we know that something is functioning on a percentage basis somewhere that causes high recoil weapons to not follow this pattern. Most of the time we're talking about very low levels of recoil already, and most of the weapons that can use recoil reducing ammo that have a meaningful reduction feel great with the recoil bonuses applied, which is exactly the point. At this stage, it's almost more about the feel than the precise numbers. So as usual, if you learned something, please consider dropping a like and a comment. To see when I'm streaming, you can follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Check out our Scab Talk podcast in the links below, and with all that said, I'll see you next time, and as always, have fun in your raids.